What's up guys? Welcome to Maximize. That's my channel. I'm Mackenzie. Thank you to anyone that's new for showing up. I adore you and this is very precious this moment we're having. So today I realized that I have not done a house tour in a while or house plant tour. I have lots of plants, you know, that's kind of the, that's kind of what's going on here. So I just thought I would show you guys around and show you some of my new plants. I got a new plant that I have yet to um, debut. So I'm excited about it, just to put it lightly. So let's, uh, let's start the tour and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Start the tour. I'm dancing if you can't tell, so. So first I wanted to show you guys this uh, this amazing plant here. This is Wesley under this blanket. He like burrows under this blanket on my couch and like that's where he stays for like seven hours a day, so. But anyway, so right above him, I have my pothos and there's actually three separate plants on there and I used to have this pothos in three like separate hanging planters, which I think you would see in my first plant tour video. But this guy, I mean, look at that, you know what I'm saying? I, um, my plan is to let it, um, grow all the way across here. That's why I have that string there. I'm just preparing for the day when he finally wants to grow all the way across. And, um, it might be a while, I realize. So I was probably preparing a little too soon, but, <laughs> but so far he's loving this spot. It's right by my southwestern window and, um, just like thriving, you know, he actually looks a little thirsty, so I'll probably water him today. Um, but with pothos, I tend to wait until they look slightly wilted before watering. Um, just cause like that, I don't know, they put on more growth when you, when you handle them like that, I've learned. So, so I have it in like this tin can thing and I got this at Ross. Um, it was on sale for like really cheap, but it's literally just held up by like these chains and I just like hung it on two, um, separate nails. And that seems to work really well. Um, it's very well supported. So eventually um, it'll grow more. And I actually had to pin up a lot of the vines. Like they probably would hang down to like here, but since my cat um, loves eating everything, I have to pin them up, <laughs> chill them out a little bit. And then I got this new table. I haven't even taken those stickers off, <laughs> sorry. But I just got this new table on Amazon and I'm I'm actually really loving it because I there was like so much real estate, plant real estate right here by my window. So I got this table because I wanted to maximize this area in plant real estate. And right here, I actually started growing cat grass for my cat. I grew it in two separate planters because I thought he would destroy it a lot faster, but he, but he didn't. So I grew two just to be safe. And I give it to him during the day when I can supervise because he like rips it apart if I leave him alone with it. It's really strange, but this is fake. Sorry. I know we don't like fake plants here. Right here is my silver leaf philodendron. And this guy has just been amazing. It's just like a really easy plant. Definitely one of the easiest philodendrons I have. And then here I just have some cuttings um, that are growing intense roots. It's very intense rootage happening. Rootage is a new word that I invented. And this one as well. It's just some monstera um, cuttings. I have my air plants just kind of hanging out on these like wood, like little branches. And they're loving this spot. They love like a lot of direct sun, weirdly, which I'm learning as time goes on. And then I have like a bunch just kind of cradled in this little candle that I had, just cause the candle is so cute, you know? And then this is my Philodendron Brazil. It definitely uh, like faded a lot when I went on vacation late last year. Um, I don't know what happened to it, but it just like is having a hard time bouncing back. So I, I transplanted it into a smaller like temporary pot. Obviously it's not very attractive. But I just wanted to give it a fighting chance, you know, so I'm supporting it as best I can. And then this is my little baby plumosa fern. Um, it's in like a really tiny pot just temporarily until it can put on more growth. It has like a new little branch right there that I'm excited about. When I saw that the other day, I almost lost my mind. But look, you see that little new branch coming in? And then right here I have my new... Um, Oxalis triangular, la, 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 la. yeah, anyway. Uh, so uh, she's loving this really bright window. 
Um, she's obviously like bending towards the light, which is crazy because she's in the brightest window you could possibly have. So she's been doing super well here. Very proud of her. Her leaves are definitely like kind of marked up. They showed up that way because I just got it in the mail um, just a couple weeks ago. But so far, I think she's going to be putting out new growth soon. So hopefully these, these like marks on the leaves will kind of disappear into the darkness. I don't know. Somewhere. They'll disappear somewhere. I might actually turn her so she can grow a little more evenly. I'm keeping her in this cover pot just temporarily. I might repot her at some point, but so far she's she's really doing fine. Um, and then right here I have like a bajillion mo new Monstera and Pothos cuttings just kind of living in this terracotta pot together. Um, I just watered them, but I think they're settling in fine. Hopefully they're pushing out more roots because I literally just repotted them um, like a few days ago probably. So they're loving it here. And then right behind them, I have my little succulents. Um, these guys I would prefer to have outside because as you can see, they're stretching towards the light, which I hate. I hate stretching succulents. It like stresses me out watching them like struggle. Um, so ideally I would have these guys outside, but since I don't have an outdoor, ooh, since I don't have an outdoor patio, for now, um, this is as close as I can get them to my window, and uh, I just have to rotate them every few days to make sure that they aren't stretching just in one direction, so at least it'll be somewhat even. So that's this table here. It's just temporary, like a lot of like temporary things are here, so eventually I'll get it more finalized and have like a look going on, but for now, you know, this is what it is. And then right next to the table, I have like this old wine box that I am obsessed with. Um, it's just, it's you can get these at Bebmo for like $5 if you ask. Um, they'll just sell them to you. They're really, really cheap, really reasonable. And they make really cute plant pots, you know, or like cover pots. But right here I have my rubber tree and she just spit out this new leaf right here. But um, she's right by my southwestern window right here, so she gets tons of light. But so far, she's doing really well. Um, always pushing out a new leaf, like, every month or so. And then right here is my new plant. This is a new Hoya that I found. It was the only Hoya in the store, and I almost lost my flippin' mind. I, like, just snatched it, and, like, these vines are just so gorgeous. Um, so she is like my new fave, basically. I'm obsessed with her. And I got her this new pot, but I'm waiting to repot her for a little bit. Um, she doesn't even have the name on here. It just says houseplant. <laughs> How insulting is that, you know? It's like, can you at least identify her, please? But I know she's a Hoya, but still, you know what I'm saying? Like, why not put in that effort, guys? Just a little effort, you know? Like, just tell me what it is. But anyway, so that's my new house plant. She's just like so pretty, so amazing. And she's been really easy, obviously, so far. So I'll be definitely making a video about her at some point. But yeah, that's my little wine box right under this window here. And then right below my wine box, I have my cactus party, plant party here. Um, I have like two little like turtles in this pot, but I love this pot. It's very Southwestern energy happening right here. Um, and I grouped my cactus together just because I think they look so cute together. They're all three different types of cactus. I forget what their exact names are. They're pretty common ones, but so far I have four because I have this new little baby that's growing every day. And it gets some direct sun in like the late afternoon that hits all of them at some point. So it's very like specifically placed so they get a little direct light. Again, ideally, I would like to have these guys outside with my other succulent up there, but I just don't have the space, so <laughs> it sucks, but that's my cactus baby. And then up here, I have my new Palia, my little Chinese money plant, and she's in this little cover pot. She's loving this spot. Her new leaves are coming in really, really well, and she's popping out like a new one, I think. Yeah, right there. She's been doing really well. I was like paranoid she was gonna drop one of these leaves because they see how it's yellowing a little bit. Um, so I think she was a little stressed after being shipped. 
um, a couple weeks ago, but hopefully she'll bounce back and hopefully she doesn't drop too many leaves. I think she's doing okay so far, but I have her just on my top shelf here. Um, she's right next to my lipstick plant and look at these new branches my lipstick plant is creating. Like look how <laughs> huge this leaf is. She's spinning out all these little new leaves too, like right here. She has two little baby ones right here. You can barely see it, it's like the size of an ant, but it is there. Right here, you can see like just a tiny little new leaf coming in. So she's been loving this spot. I actually think this spot is a little too intense for her because one of her leaves looked like kind of scorched. Um, and she's like a foot away from this window, so it kind of makes sense. So I'm considering moving her back or something, but just testing the waters. I think so far she's good. And then right here is my super amazing ficus, my weeping fig. Um, she has been growing so much lately. She has like this crazy branch happening right here, which I love. Um, I can't fathom ever like trimming her back. I just want her to like go crazy. Basically, I'm just like, you go girl, like get it, you know? <laughs> she she really likes this spot. She used to be even closer to the window, like right here, but I moved her back when I got all these new plants and she's been handling that really well. She dropped like maybe 10 leaves, but it really wasn't that bad. So I'm very proud of her. She's in that really cute basket that I'm obsessed with. I'm actually trying to air layer if you can see that, I'm trying to air do some air layering propagation on her, but so far I haven't really gotten any results. <laughs> but um, eventually she will prevail and I'll make a baby for her. <laughs> that sounded weird. And then right next to her, I have my Raptitra Tetra Spam Spread. It's a mini Monstera Ginny is the, nick the common name, the nickname. But I have her on this like makeshift moss pole. It's not really a moss pole because there's no moss. But I just have a climbing pole for her. And she's in this cover pot still. Um, I'm actually probably going to repot her soon. Um, just because her roots are like really exploding out of the pot. So I think she's ready. Um, but I'm just waiting for her to really settle into this spot right here. And I'm trying to make sure this is enough light. But so far she's doing wonderfully. I couldn't be happier with her but that's my little like table here it's all kind of temporary i don't know i feel like i'm gonna rearrange it like 300 more times in the next like few weeks so this is all totally temporary but we'll see and then right above my ficus i have my wandering jew plants my trendiscentias and they're both in these like matching pots that I have linked below if you're interested. And I have these macrame hangers also linked below. They're just like really, really nice and really not that expensive. But she's been doing really well. Both of them have been doing really well. Um, I just posted like a propagation video for these guys because this one is clearly a lot fuller than, than this guy right here. So I've been trying to take cuttings from this plant, add them to that plant, just to kind of fill her in a little bit more. Um, and I put her branches like up into the macrame because when she was hanging down, she was just kind of getting lost in there. So they're right by my Southwestern window. So they get tons of good exposure. Typically with house plants, I usually hang one like slightly higher than the other one, just to give it kind of like a cool effect and it kind of covers more of the wall with plant. So that's always a good hot tip. And then right here, I have my arrowhead plant so that I moved out into the living room and it gets, it's about six feet back from the window. And so far it's been doing really well. You can see all these new leaves coming in. Um, I'm really happy about that. See this new one, um, this new one, this new one. I mean, just so many new leaves. I'm like, I couldn't be happier. And I have it in a matching um, basket as my ficus. So they kind of go together. And then that's our Wi-Fi router. My boyfriend is convinced that our Wi-Fi sucks. And it's like, it's like, you know that scene from A Beautiful Mind when he's like writing math on the window? Like that's kind of what it's like trying to watch my boyfriend like figure out the whole Wi-Fi issue we've been having. He's like, it needs to be closer. It needs to be three inches to the left. So now it's just in front of my plant, which is upsetting. You know what? I gotta let him have his Wi-Fi fun experiments. I don't care. But this is my arrowhead plant. She's, I have the hanger still on her, but she's like kind of like blase down below. So I, I kind of put her lower in this cover pot. 
to make her look a little fuller, if that makes sense. Um, so see how much fuller she looks when she's in her cover pot, like set a little bit lower. So that's kind of what I've been trying to do with her. I've like messed up the whole look right now, but <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say. And then right here in this like gorgeous TJ Maxx um, pot, I have like a pothos. It's kind of hard to show you, but I have her like on these um, makeshift trellis with the bamboo sticks. I have links below if you guys want to take a look at them. And I'm just training it up the trellis. Sorry, my boyfriend's computer is massive. <laughs> and right in the middle of everything. It's great. So that's my little like pothos right there. I just like how this pot like plays off of the mirror right there. And then right here I have like, <laughs> it's just like this little painting I got in Paris when I was there last year before the world, you know, ended and everything. This is about 12 feet back from my Southwestern window and it's been totally fine, been thriving. So obviously pothos are pretty bulletproof. So it's a great option if you need a plant that's in a slightly darker corner. Um, this one's pretty much the only plant that can thrive this far back for me so far. And maybe a spider plant would do well in this kind of setting too, or a ZZ plant or a snake plant, but so far for me, Pothos has proven their worth. <laughs> and then right here I have my other Pothos. I just have like too many Pothos, guys, because I just keep like propagating and propagating and then I'm stuck with like 50,000 Pothos. <laughs> but um, so this Pothos is hanging um, on either side of my living room. See on that beam, there's another Pothos over there and um, right here. So they've been doing really well. They're about six feet back from my southwestern window. And again, they're, they're the only plants that can really thrive there. I used to hang my lipstick plant here and it seemed to do okay, but I felt like she needed more light. So that's why I've switched her with the pothos here. You know, they're doing well. They're still pretty variegated for how far back they are. Um, usually when they're further back from the light, they don't get as variegated, but these guys are still pretty, have some pretty good spots on them, so. And then in my kitchen, guys, I have more pothos. It's like ridiculous. This, it all came from one pothos plant, okay? One. So they just keep exploding. They're like the only plant that really does this amazingly well in my kitchen, just because it's such a weird location. It gets really hot when I'm cooking and everything. And a lot of plants get stressed out, but this guy just never dies. So <laughs> if you need a fridge plant, pothos, guys. And then right here I have my Chef Laura. She's just been doing super, super well. Um, I'm actually air layering this plant and it actually worked. My air layering actually worked on this plant. So I've been freaking out about that. And I'll probably do a video about air layering after this. But she's just been doing so well. She's in like this big terracotta pot here. Right here I have my coleus cuttings that I just potted up recently. And so far they look like kind of weird and like leggy but I keep pinching the top two leaves on on these plants, hoping they'll branch out more so it'll fill in like this situation here, but um, I just keep them in like this like leftover can. And then right here I have my desert rose seedling that just, I can't grab things, um, that just recently bounced back from the dead. So I'm really obsessed with her now. And she's been loving being close to this window, but no direct light just yet. I think she's still a little young to handle that kind of intensity. They seem to both really enjoy being right by this super bright window. As you can see, it's really bright <laughs> and it makes the lighting really bad. <laughs> and then right here, I'm actually growing more green onion. And this is so easy. This is like a great thing for you to do if you're a green onion fan. But literally all I do is I wrap it in this plastic bag and fill it with water and it just keeps growing back. And I just keep it in this little cup here that I hang on this like hook and it's just right next to my window and that's just like the perfect exposure for it. So I highly recommend doing that. Um, and then you can also do it with basil. So I do it with basil too and I actually just clip this guy so I can, I can put it in here if I wanted to. But um, just keeping all your herbs like right by the window is like just such a good idea and right in the kitchen too. So um, that's my little basil baby. That's my green onion baby. All right, so now I'm going to show you my bedroom plants, which have filled out quite a bit, not to brag or anything, 
Um, sorry, the construction is really loud today. <laughs> so I'm gonna shut my windows right quick because they are like sawing away out there. Um, and I washed uh, all my sheets today. I made my bed. I really cleaned for this video specifically. So maybe I should just clean my house as if I were gonna film every day, you know? But that's not gonna happen, no. Okay, so I made my bed, thank you. <laughs> But basically, so let me start over here by my Monstera Deliciosa. So Wesley had a moment with this plant. He left it alone for legit a year, like a year and a half. And then just like a month or two ago, he started chewing on it. And um, it was actually kind of scary because he, it was just one night where he really attacked it. And he's, I think he ate like a good portion of it. And as you can see, like, you know, he ripped off chunks of it. And that's actually really dangerous for cats because this is a very toxic plant. So I immediately moved it to my bedroom and I shut my door to make sure he can never see it again, basically, without unless I'm in here with him. Um, so basically, she's been banished to the bedroom for good. And she was replaced in my living room by my arrowhead plant. Um, and so far, Wesley can't even reach that plant. So it's been working out. But you can see she has a new leaf coming in, okay? And she has actually a second new leaf coming in. You see that right there, right here? Precious. I almost broke it. Oh my god. And then look, this branch is growing through this leaf right here. <laughs> Isn't that like the most incredible thing you've ever seen? I mean, I think I'm living in a miracle right now. But anyway, she's right next to my southwestern window. So she gets a little more western, south, like heavier on the western <laughs> exposure. And she tends to really like that. She gets a like a dapple of direct sun towards the end of the day, but it's really broken up by these trees I have outside right there. So it's very, very good. She's obviously producing new leaves here, so she's happy. Um, and I'm continuously fertilizing her, so that always helps as well. And then on my bed stand, I have my Monstera Adansonii, like, mother plant. And she's been looking really leggy lately, but I just, like, gave her a serious haircut. And I think she's she's producing all these new leaves. Um, so I'm excited for her, but she also looks kind of rough. She's pushing out a bunch of new growth, so hopefully that all looks even better once she bounces back. But I've had her for years now, so... I don't know if that's just like the natural life cycle where they just look a little rougher and you have to give them serious haircuts more regularly. But I just have one little trellis stick here that she's been growing up. So I feel like she likes that. And she's right in my southwestern window. So tons of bright light throughout the day. And I have like a little diffuser right here, a little humidifier to make the space even more humid. So hopefully that's enough for her. And then right below her, I have my prayer plant, which has been looking fantastic. Um, she's been pushing out new leaves as well right here. And I just recently moved her. So I'm hoping she continues to do really well. It's really great exposure, no direct sun whatsoever. So just really bright and direct. She just has all these gorgeous new leaves coming in. And I just put a cutting in here as well that I, that I had been rooting in water. So she's looking fuller. Right above my bed, I have a pothos hanging in this little like thing, me uh, metal thing. I don't know what to, how to describe it, but I don't really love the pot the pothos is in. It's kind of temporary, but eventually I'm going to put more pothos in there, I think, and just kind of fill it in to the max. Um, but I kind of like specifically placed all those vines. So it kind of looks like it's encircling like the whole thing, which I, I love the vibe of. And that wire is like little twinkle lights. I can turn it on. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. So then I have like little twinkle lights coming up around. So it just kind of looks really cute, especially at night. Um, like all these little twinkle lights everywhere. And my grandpa painted that as well. Okay, and then right here I have my curly um, spider plant, curly haired one. It's so young, so you can only see like one curl right now, but she will get them, I promise. And then right here I have my Marble Queen Pothos who just spit out this new all white leaf. Like look how white that is real quick. Like see how white that is? I really didn't think she would have a leaf this white because she's so far back. She's about seven feet back from our south facing window, so 
I'm really shocked by that, but she's been loving this spot, doing really well. So I'm just gonna keep her here on my dresser. And then right here I have my Dressania Compacta. Um, it has definitely slowed down in growth since I moved it away from the window. And this is a little turtle friend right here. But um, it's regardless, it's been doing really well surviving. It's very drought tolerant. And I really hardly have to water it. It's just always pushing out new leaves, whether I do or not. So definitely one of my faves. I have it in like this deep dish pan or whatever, this pot. <laughs> and then my boyfriend is very nerdy and really wanted to put this Lego toy here. So that's there. That's my life. Um, just living that nerd, nerd life, you know? But yeah, so that's my little dresser collection. I'm probably gonna put more plants on here, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and my boyfriend's just gonna have to deal with it. And then right below, I have my corn plant, which has, ugh, my cat has shredded it to hell. So I moved it to the, the dark corner of my bedroom. And as you can see, like all the damage that he's done over the years, he actually hasn't um, attacked it in a long time since I moved it here, but you know, the scars are real. Like he did all that damage to it. So I feel really bad. Um, but so far it's been doing really well. I water it a lot. It's always putting out new leaves. Like this is a new leaf right here. Um, and then here's another one coming in. So I'm hoping it'll fill in eventually and bounce back from the cat attacks that it faced for many, many moons. And then right next to my corn plant, I have my bigger curly spider plant. I have it in my bedroom because my cat would literally murder this plant. He would eat it like in a heartbeat because he loves grass. Um, but you can see like one curl coming in really well. These are starting to curl down here a little bit. So I have it in this taller pot. This is a plant my mom gave me. So that's why the pot is so nice. It's in the perfect location because it's far enough that it's not too intense, the heat and everything. So I think she'll do really well right here. I just have a random tissue box and a horse, just a random horse photo. <laughs> and then, yeah, we have a bat next to the bed, you know, just can't be too careful, you know, it's just good defense uh, weapon. <laughs> and I think there's space right there for another plant. So we will see. Um, I don't want to overload my house with plants, but then again, I really do. So we'll see who wins that battle. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you guys is my bathroom. So in here behind my toilet, I have like a trellis. I know that's like a really weird idea, but I don't know. It just weirdly looks good to me. Sorry, you're looking at a toilet, but I just like it. I don't know. It adds like a wood texture and this vine right here is fake. Um, it's just like a fake, whatever, you know, decorative vine. And same with this right here, that's fake. But um, I have my two orchids right here, just cause orchids tend to love high humidity and they actually do really well um, in this sort of light. I think this is like Northwestern exposure. So you have a window up there, but they seem to really like it. And I'm telling you guys, my grandma has orchids like in her north facing window and she is like, a magician, okay? She doesn't even use fertilizer and those things are constantly blooming, okay? I'm gonna use her photos and hopefully she doesn't like sue me because she just sent me photos <laughs> of her orchids blooming and I'm just really, really jealous. But see, I have like this new um, leaf coming in. It's looking great. And this one actually has a second orchid. So this is the main one and then this is like a little baby child. And I just have them both in this basket. And then I have like this little fragrance stick cause I'm fancy. And it's like a spa up in here. It's really great. And then next to my orchid on my sink is my gorgeous maiden hair queen fern baby girl. Um, I actually had her outside for a while, but I actually like, because I don't go outside, I forgot about her. So she got a little fried because um, the heat was a little more intense than um, I thought it would be. So she has like a new stem coming in that I'm really excited about. I think she's really enjoying the humidity in the bathroom and I get pretty good Western, like Northwestern exposure here. The bathroom is definitely the best place for this girl. So if you have a bathroom with a window, I highly recommend moving her in there. Um, just because humidity is so hard to keep up with with these kind of plants. Um, I'll show you where Wesley is right now. He's literally still in the couch. This is him. He's still there. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please like, please comment, and let me know what you guys want to see, and I will see y'all in the next one.
Bye.